Then, leading libertarian Ron Paul will stop by. He'll tell me why he thinks the government's proposed overhaul of the nation's financial markets is a bad idea. Let me switch gears here and go to a Republican presidential candidate, Ron Paul. Ron, that doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense at all to, to talk about, well, maybe we should get more into hybrids. That's the problem with all of this, is there is too much money in the system. We're gaming the system. It, you go after oil and not uh, the farmers because, well, the farmers are more popular. You go after oil and not GE because, well, GE is doing clean energy. Uh, big oil is doing dirty energy. Why should we be playing this game at all? Well, well, we shouldn't be. What we should do is to protect the marketplace and let the market determine what is the best source of energy. This whole idea that when prices go up, we have to blame somebody. Sometimes people want to blame labor unions for the inflation of the high cost of living, and sometimes people want to blame profits, like for the oil companies. And they never want to talk about the real problem, and that is there are too many dollars floating around because they're created by the Federal Reserve, and some prices go up much faster than other prices, and that's why we have this tremendous tremendous price inflation in, in energy. But uh, I think we're looking at symptoms and not at the cause, and uh, they're getting all over the place on trying to solve the problem, like putting taxes on energy companies. That's not going to solve the problem. Well, I have to tell you, I, I am more convinced than ever the cause of almost all of our problems in our nation come from the building that you're standing in right now. Almost everything that Congress does, at least in the last hundred years, we end up paying for, and then they're fixing the problems that they created. I mean, it's, it's this story over and over and over again, and yet, you know, they, they want to expand programs. They want to make everything bigger. And, and I can boil that down to the fact that the people around this place in D.C. and in the Capitol and the executive branch and the judicial branch, they don't care that much about our Constitution because if we followed the Constitution, we wouldn't have these spending programs and we wouldn't be causing all these problems. And yet the more problems we create, the more government the people demand. For every problem we create down here we, uh, or try to solve, then we create two new problems as it goes on and on and it pyramids up and someday we're going to have to realize that we can't afford this much government any longer. Right. We got we got to depend on ourselves and on freedom and sound money rather than thinking that Washington D.C. can solve all our problems. I have to tell you, they, uh, they you know, we had the Fed up on Capitol Hill, and everybody's trying to get more regulation, more power to the Fed. Yet we're calling oil in front of Congress to t to explain their profits. Part of the reason why oil is so expensive is because of the Fed. Do you mind, Ron? We're, we're up against the break. Will you stay for a couple of minutes and we'll talk to you about the Fed okay. coming up on the other side of the break. We'll sure. be back in just a minute. I swear to you, the entire stock market ganged up today and decided to play one giant, you know, April Fool's joke on investors because I cannot explain how the stock market rocketed today in the face of the morning news that gas prices are hitting another record high. UBS is announcing another $19 billion in write downs along with the resignation of its chairman. The Deutsche Bank uh, is revealing another $3.9 billion in write downs. And maybe I'm missing the forest through the trees, but. The bad news this morning seemed to be irrelevant compared to yesterday's announcement of the most sweeping reform and regulation of the financial sector, sector since the Great Depression. So if that is why the market is so happy, um, how long is that going to last? I mean, isn't this a little like rearranging the deck chairs and the Titanic? Isn't it already too late? Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul is back with us. I, I, giving the Fed, the, the organization that answers to nobody in our government, uh, more power when they created these bubbles is beyond me. Mr. Paul. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. We do need regulations in all markets. The market itself regulates itself by supply and demand and bad businesses going out of businesses and consumers benefiting when a, uh, when a business does a good deal. But the regulation has to be on government. The regulation has to be on the Federal Reserve. You're absolutely right. The Federal Reserve has so much power and it's very secretive and now we're planning on giving it even more. But that's what should be re 
regulate it. What we need is a, a uh, oversight of the Federal Reserve. We have no oversight of monetary policy. They can create all the money they want out of thin air, and that is the creation of the bubble. It causes the malinvestment and the excessive debt, and now they're coming in and they want to regulate the results. It's sort of like putting wage and price controls on once you have inflation, not realizing the inflation comes from the Federal Reserve inflating the money supply. Okay. The, um, I think we're absolutely on the road to uh, nationalism. I mean, we're going to nationalize these banks and this debt. I mean, I, I, I don't know how you get out of it. They were saying yesterday, I think it was yesterday in the newspaper I saw that they're on a road to nationalization the Nordic way. Well, the, the Nordic way, when they bailed out their banks, they let the stock they, they let the stockholders and the shareholders fail. They lose their money. None of these CEOs walked away with any money. That's not what we're doing here. We're talking about bailing out the mortgages and bailing out the, the banks. Well, what kind of system is that? You know, I think we are on the road to nationalization, but we've already been on that road, and this is just accelerating the pace because the large banks especially are in collusion with the Federal Reserve because once the Federal Reserve creates the high-powered money, the banking system then can further inflate through fractional reserve banking. So they're in cahoots in this whole, whole process. It, so, Congressman, I, I have to tell you that um, I find myself uh, increasingly in a, in a place mentally that I just don't want to be. I, I've never been a conspiracy theorist. I've never been any of these, you know. My, I've never been a John Birch or anything. I always thought those people were crazy. But the more you learn and the more you look at history, uh, this weekend I was reading about the crash of 1907 and how that thing was controlled and wh what came out of that and came to the Fed. I mean, we're, we're repeating the same mistake and it was always to give these private individuals control almost a fourth branch of government or a separate tree of our economic system. How do we get, how do we untangle ourselves well, from this? Well, there is no more ominous power than to give this authority to a secret bank to create money out of thin air. And it works as long as people trust the money. But if the money has no backing to it and it's not convertible into anything, it eventually ends. And this is what we're witnessing, the beginning of the end of the dollar hegemony. It, it is going to end because the world is starting to reject it. But uh, no, we need a mo new monetary system and it will come. All paper money is self-destruct. And now we're seeing what's happening. They're able to patch it together now and then for decades. Even, even Bernanke, who's getting a lot of blame now, he didn't create most of these bubbles. And yet he's trying to keep this system that is unsalvageable together by just further inflating. But eventually we will have to have monetary reform. So, it is coming, and it's, it's coming quickly. Co um, Congressman, um, I had David Walker on. I know you know who he is, right. the head of the GAO, and he said this is this is a, a nightmare coming. It's a you know giant meteor coming, falling out of the sky our way. He said that it'll only be solved by a third party. You're not going to be the Republican candidate. Why don't you run as a third party? You have a lot of support out there. Well, m m one reason is is that uh, you know there's not a whole lot of democracy in this country. You know, in the third party, you really have a tough job. I tried it one time. Spent most of my money just trying to get on the ballot. So unless you're Ross Perot, you can't compete. And, you know, you do get marginalized even if you have. Uh, non-conventional ideas, you get marginalized even in a major party, as, as I have been. But uh, right now, it, I, I think there's a fertile field out there right now for a third party. There's a lot of frustration and anger and aggravation, and it's a stalemate. You know, I don't see any difference between the three leading candidates right now. We don't know who the I... Democrats are going to be. And, uh, and, and people are starved for some other answers. I agree with you on that. I, I have to tell you, I don't agree with uh, everything that you say, but there are a few things <laughs> that man you got it right on and nobody else is saying it thank you very much <laughs> now you, time to find out